Okay. Um, epoxy resin with colloidal silica in it um, gives you this kind of paste type consistency, which is ideal for gluing timbers or other substances or, or parts into boats where you don't want the resin to flow away from the joint. Um, okay, so I'm now going to glue some various parts into this here GP14. And you can see you just smear the paste exactly where you want it to go. Um, I suggest it's always best to do it on both surfaces. Um, the amount of glue that gets squeezed out can be cleaned away and you know you have a glue joint all the way along the glue line. Um, there is a danger obviously that you might not have a glue joint and you end up with a weak or aerated joint. Okay, so there we are. Glue on both surfaces, push the timber into place and you can see the glue oozes out and it's a simple job just to knife it away. Okay, so that's that stringer placed. Now what I'm going to do is, whoops, is replace this square patch with a piece of timber that I've pre-scarfed. There's the scarf joint there, there's the female scarf on the boat hull. Uh, and again, I'm going to glue all the hull surface and all the patch surface and then the top of the stringer, this part of the plywood, and place it down. Okay, and again, with the colloidal silica in the resin, it's a simple job of just spreading the glue over the surfaces you want it to go. I'm going to protect this bit of bare wood down here as well because obviously once the timber's in place I'm not going to be able to get any epoxy onto that surface to seal it. So I'm just going to carefully blot a bit in there. Conveniently make water flow lines as well in the bottom of the boat. The problem with colloidal silica is that once it has actually gone off um, it does uh, produce a very very hard surface to try and sand or file to shape. So if you can try and keep uh, the glue ooze or splurge or whatever you want to call it as neat and as tidy as possible, then it will save you a lot of heartache later on. But of course, you want to try and get glue on all the wood surface. So that's my hole done. Let's quickly knife some onto here. Because I can get to the inside of the cockpit of the GP14, I'm not too worried about epoxy coating the whole of the plywood surface because I can do that at a later time. scarf edge to do. You can see how the, the buttery consistency of the resin just makes it so straightforward. Putting down pieces of plywood with glue all over it and it's not going everywhere. Wonderful stuff. Okay, now. Now I've got both my surfaces glued up. Now put the patch in place. Now I'm going to have problems holding all this down for the next 18 hours till the resin cures. So I'm going to employ um, half inch screws with a penny washer into holes that I've already pre-used just to make sure because obviously I've dry run all this sequence to make sure that everything fits nicely. You can see the resin just squeezes out gently. You only need two or three of these just to accommodate the bend of the hull and hold the wood down. Um, the handy thing is with this as well is that the, you don't really tend to get that much epoxy on the screw um, and the screws generally release without any problems. I've got a slight high surface here which I'm not happy about. So I'll put another one in there. Let's 
give it a tap to start the screw off. There we go. Bites into the wood first time. You should see the glue ooze a bit more as I pull it in. There we go. Okay. And then we scrape the remainder away. Now again, because the GP14 is an open cockpit boat, I can now go underneath the boat and scrape the excess glue from the inside. And that's how we use colloidal silica as a thickening agent.